Hi, this is another video for Amp Minor Repair. And tonight we're going to continue on a board that I've already made a video about. This was a zero ASICs found. And um, in the last video, we looked at some chips in the middle thinking that maybe the clock um, wasn't running right. And then I double checked the 30th and 29th chip and the zero or, or the one and the first and second chip. And um, we, we found that everything looked normal. The only thing I found of note was I think when I was learning things, I had tried to replace this 30th chip and I, I didn't know as much as I do now. So I'm kind of suspecting because there was one bad resistance I saw on a power line <coughs> that um, maybe I didn't do that good of a job. So this is the first of a three part series on how to replace an ant minor chip. If you like this content and want to subscribe to my channel, there's a subscribe button there. If you want to get notified when I post new videos, I think there's a bell there that you can click on. Please do that. If you want to support su support me in this, help me bring these videos to you in the description of the video. There's a, um, a wallet address for Bitcoin um, and a PayPal address if you'd like to support this. I appreciate the help. I had to buy all this video equipment just because I felt compelled to get this word out to you. I learned a lot in the last few months and I just want to share. Um, another disclaimer, I'm, I'm by no means an expert, um, but I have gotten by. I have successfully replaced chips and I've not successfully replaced chips. So we'll, we'll see what goes on here. Um, but I follow the same process every time. Okay, so this first part of the video is, is um, basically how to disassemble the board and prepare it to get another chip. Um, in there, the things I do. And then, um, so we'll go as far as pulling the original chip out. I do want to stop in the middle and recheck some resistances. I want to talk to you about a power supply in the middle that I look at. It may not be present on this 30th chip. I'll have to look, but I'm along this top row, there's these, these power supplies that come across the top. And sometimes you can check the resistance on those. But um, so let's get started. Um, I'll, I'll start by removing the, the, um, 30th chip. And, and when I'm replacing a chip, I actually like to clear around it. So, so actually this time I'm, I'm really going to remove these four. And then if you flip over the back, it's very important if you're going to try to replace a chip is to take off this bottom heat sink. This is really the guy that does the heavy cooling. You might think these guys cool more than, than the uh, chips on the back, but, but it's not true. This guy has surface contact with, with a lot of melt. So we're going to take him off and and check out some of the circuits and then recheck some resistances. Hopefully I can find the power supply hanging in, going into here and we'll double check it before I pull the chip and then I'll pull the chip probably. Um, hopefully I'm right. I don't like replacing chips needlessly. And I haven't decided whether I use a used chip off a burned up board that I have or a new chip. I'll probably go with a new chip. Um, those are harder to configure. So, so let's start this. Um, let's prepare the area. I'm gonna use my hot air gun at about 350 degrees and my pliers. Yeah, so let's let this guy warm up and take these dudes off. And then we can have a look at that, that chip a little closer. All right, so I'm at 350 degrees. I'll go for the inside ones first. It just takes a while to heat them up. There's a lot of work to replace the chip and then, then unfortunately the, the results are, are varied. Um, I'm hoping one of you guys is an expert soldering person for QFN or, or surface mount. It's not an SMB, but a, but a surface mount chip like I have. Maybe I'm doing something wrong and you can put something in the comments maybe that we can have a discussion and, and help with that. So again, um, I said this in all my videos, don't be yanking on this guy very hard. Just wait till it warms up and melts the solder on the top so that we, we don't pull anything like chips out or anything. Um, it will eventually melt. I just check it every once in a while and then we'll just give it up. There we go. Pretty easy to lift that guy off. I'm putting in my lovely pile of heat sinks that you can't see on the video. <clears throat> Hopefully I can find those homes for all those heat sinks, meaning I, I get all the boards running. This chip's probably unnecessary to pull the heat sink off. I just want a lot of space. I'll probably try my microscope. I've never done a chip replacement with a microscope. And although I can see more with the microscope, I don't know about getting the heat gun in there right on top of that chip and, and, and doing that. So, so I may have to shift to this camera, which unfortunately I really have a hard time getting a really close focus. So this is the guy in question. We're going to take him off.
So I've got medium airflow on this heat gun on for 350 degrees. It's okay. I, I like pulling a lot of hair over, air over these chip, these heat sinks. And it helps them get off faster. And one more. Then I think we have a good area to work on up here. I'm not positive I had this chip out, but something recalled that I did. Um, it's the only one with funny resistance I can find. Um, hopefully it's the right thing. Okay, I got these top guys off. Um, I want to flip this over and take the backing of the chip we're going to replace off. These take quite a while. I just kind of run them down the side with my um, heat gun. I do most of my testing on the back of the board because these guys are labeled and the, and the testing ports are really more accessible except for what's in between here. So, but this really is the one that protects the chip the most because I, can, I can't unsolder a chip without this guy off. You'd have to just blast it with heat and probably by then you'd ruin the chip. Um, so you really have to have this back guy off. There we go. Nice surface. He has a nice contact. So these back heat sinks, look at the surface area they have to cool. So there's quite a large, large surface area to catch heat um, with that. So um, with that, I think the gun necessity is over. Let's um, take a look here. I don't really see any specific power supplies for this guy. There's a power supply that probably feeds these two and maybe these two or maybe these three. And um, really those power supplies are, are clear up here. They're kind of hard to see. Maybe I can show them in the microscope. I want to do a session. These are voltage regulators and they come in kind of two flavors. And how the power gets across the board to each one of these lines, I've kind of figured that out through trial and error. And I think it's useful to know. I'm on the back of this board also. Um, this big chip over here is the programmable IC. So this is when you, when you sometimes have to update the um, firmware. It actually goes into this chip. It's a standard chip. And I think you can use the PIC kit for that. Here's another resistor that supplies 17.4, 18 volts to this area of the board. And this area of the board runs through three other types of power resistors that then supply 18 volts in various places. And I haven't quite figured out how it gets from here to all over. Maybe it's these dudes. Maybe it's these main power lines on the board. Um, I'm not sure, but um, there are a lot to learn on these boards and a lot I'd like to share of what I learned. But we're focusing on this chip first. So um, I wanted to check out, and I wish I could show you in the microscope. It's really hard to see. I don't think I can focus this guy any better. Um, I'm gonna take this yellow dude off because I'm done soldering. I can probably get a clearer focus, hopefully. Maybe I can show you in the microscope. Why don't I show you in the microscope just for that guy? So let's, Stop the video and switch in a sec here. I don't have to do that twice, but that's okay. Here's the chip. We'll have a look at it. Okay. Switch sources. Okay. So let me. The reason I think I've repaired this is is. Um, really is I can see a lot of flux kind of hanging around in here and I'm going to do a good job of cleaning it before I really take it off and I can do that um, like what was that that almost looked like a solder ball or is that the one from last video on there I don't know so um, I'll do that with you right now but what I wanted to show you was the resistance I was having problems with and it's the resistance that's coming out of this power line since this is the first chip or the 30th on the board this power actually comes from somewhere up here. And I think actually this is this is some sort of power resistor. This is the exception on the board, but this probably is supplying probably 1.7 volts down these lines. Um, it's typical to have capacitors to ground. They, they get rid of the noise coming out of the power supply. So I, I, I think capacitors are more or less noise, noise filters. They don't stop it. And then you've got some other power coming out that going down to the chip, one's got a resistor, probably a 33.4, most of them are. I'd have to look at the actual circuits. So um, so then the other thing is they go through these capacitors. This is the last check before it goes in the chips. And this resistance typically, these are on every row of chips. 
um, usually is like 60 or 70 or 80. And when I measured this resistance on the video um, last time, it was like double that. So, so I, I kind of suspect there may be a problem and it would be going into these, these ports and, and maybe the chip isn't set right or something. So um, I'll probably switch back to the other screen and do some measurements on these just to make sure. Whoops, I hit it. And then I'll, I'll throw some alcohol on this and really look closely. Um, maybe I'll do that before. I see a little kind of solder thing here. It, it kind of has all the appearance of when I was learning how to place chips. And um, the thing I was not doing when I was replacing chips is really cleaning off this pad. So I, I think I had a lot of chips that are raised up and I'm gonna go through that whole process. But, but today we're just gonna sanity check this chip a little more and then I'm gonna remove it. So I'll probably go back to the other video now that you've seen the close up of it. And that's where I'm gonna work. Um, when you pull off the chip, why I'm here is I usually try to throw some flux on here, all these resistors, especially these resistors, these resistors, and also especially these capacitors, because even though I turn the air down on my air gun really, really low, um, invariably you'll push off one of these guys. Something will happen, your, your tweezers will hit it and you push it off. So I actually bought extra resistors and capacitors that fit around the chip. I'm not concerned with that, I can replace them, but I, I'd rather not spend my time on that if I can. Um, so you'll see me put flux all over and make a huge mess on the board because it gets sticky and it just holds, it just holds everything in place while I'm working on this. But, but let's, um, while I have the microscope, if we can, I'm gonna move that just a little bit over there. I'm gonna pull some alcohol out and have a look at a cleaned up. Maybe I can even get in closer for those ports. I, the microscopes, I have a hand microscope I use a lot, but let's let just clean that guy up a little bit. Clean him up here. See if I can, um, don't know if I can go in closer. Let's give it a try um, and focus it. Yeah, let me move him over though. You know, in general, it's, everything looks pretty good in there. Um, I don't know, I can, might even be able to go even closer, let's see. Yeah, so you can start seeing some of the little tiny solder balls inside the alcohol in there. But there's just nothing big. One time I tried putting paste, and I still do it, I just watch how much. I tried putting paste on the, on the top of the on the top here of the chip to get it to stick because it didn't have much solder. And somehow the paste got into the legs and then there was just build up with huge amounts of solder balls in there. So I, I look for some of my earlier work but I've learned the hard way. So, you know, these guys look good. Let's, let's go look on the other side of him, which is here. And let me, we're gonna, I, I'm so close up, I'm gonna have to kind of run through, but let me douse him again. The alcohol helps you see, th see things, like see those solder balls? That's really close to touching, but it's really not. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think, see here's a head of a pin. That's how close we are up here. I mean, these things kind of wash about, but I don't see any problem with these. This chip really, I hate to take it off because you see the nice balls, how, how the balls are for each of the legs. You know, in general, this chip looks like it's placed perfectly. It doesn't mean it's not bad, um, but it looks like it's placed perfectly. So kind of kind of hate to do this. I don't have firm proof that it's bad, but let's look at that resistance and compare it to some other stuff. And, and then we can um, go on from there. I, it just, I may be doing this for nothing. It's the frustrating thing. You don't always know where the problem is with the board. And perhaps I should pull off every heat sink and look for a solder ball before I do this. Um, and maybe I will in this video. Maybe we'll get as far as really getting it ready, but I'll do it anyway. It's okay. I can be successful at it most times. Okay, I'm going to switch back the video to the, the larger lens, so hang on for a sec. Let's see if I'm even close. Somewhat close. Let's come on down here. Okay. So we're working backwards. Let me do it this way since I can access it. So that's the chip in question. Um, what I'd like to show you now, let me turn off my microscope video so it doesn't 
some of the, um, if I can get this in place. Maybe, maybe not. How about over here? Make it a little hard, but you can kind of read it. It's a little backwards for me. So we're working in this area mainly. And um, again, I, I check the test ports all the time against the ground of the chip. Um, and those are okay, but, but when I went to check the, the, the resistance between this power circuit, and I think it was, I, I, I think I put it right on the tip of this guy. The last video it turned out to be like, should be like a 1.5 and then 70. So that's pretty good. I wasn't getting that. Let's see what this guy is. This should guy be about 70 or 80. Yeah, there's 175. Sorry, this, this pin is a tiny capacitor to get there. So I'm trying to show you what I'm measuring just on that other side of that capacitor. Yeah, so I'm getting that. 174.2. And hopefully it's not backwards on the video, but that's what that reads. And, and if I look at, for instance, this chip, it should be about the same, although it's, it's kind of a different power circuit. Well, there's 106. I know it should be high. This guy hangs 105, 115.6. So that's consistent, that's consistent. So I'm almost having second thoughts of doing this. Not sure there's a problem, although 175 is pretty high for that. Um, if you follow this power circuit, in this case, it goes up to uh, this chip up here, which is a power chip that I was showing you before that runs that line down. Just not sure I want to pull him yet. Hate to pull a chip that's working, but I can't prove it's not working. Um, it's really hard. I, I suppose if I had an oscilloscope, I could poke in there and maybe you'd see a pattern show up and compare it to the other ones. Um, not sure there. I'm not sure if I want to remove this guy or not. It's the only thing. So maybe um, I'm going to stop the video here. If I move on with this chip, I'll continue this series and publish it. Um, I think what I should do just, just, for, just for the sake of thoroughness is pull off all these heat sinks and um, make sure there's, there's nothing wrong with any of the chips in between. I do believe I've taken this off. You see that? I don't know if you can see it, but there's some flux there. This is kind of clean. These are flux like I've had it off. Um, and that's why I chose this to do the video at night, but I'm not convinced I'm going to do that yet until I actually maybe check out the rest of the chips and maybe measure their voltages on the tester before I do this. All right, so I'm going to stop the video there. Sorry for the false, false thing. We won't pull this chip out yet tonight, um, but if I can't find anything else, I'll come back and pull this chip out and make this series. All right, thank you very much.